front clip. So the goal here is that front clip is going to go on this one, and this one is going to go on that one. Why am I bothering to move this rusty old front clip over to that one? Well, I want to keep that as an operating vehicle for the moment, and I don't want to just turn it into a parts rig just right off the bat. So we're going to swap them and maintain the functionality, but we're going to put the things that I want together into the final truck into that format. So this front clip is going to come off first, since that's a running driving truck, and then we'll swap parts over. All right, that's the fenders and hood off. This side, that's okay. Uh, we do have just a teensy bit of a problem over here. That bolt hole's missing, and this entire piece of metal here is missing. But that's fine. I can weld something in there, and I don't have to worry about how it looks. It just has to be structurally sound because it is all hidden. I will just match the dimensions and location of this hole and weld it on nut over there. And the same for the sheet metal down there. Uh, now that bolts through the fender so I don't have to weld any nut on because the welded part is in the fender. That just completely came off with the fender. The more I take this off, the more I'm wondering, um, Will I be able to reconstruct this on that truck over there? And um, the, the answer is I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's worthwhile. It's so rusty. It's, it's way more rusty than, than I had imagined, but I, I don't know. I wasn't going to replace the fender liners, but since they're mostly going to be off, except for the few bolts in the back, I'm going to do that. Because um, these fender liners have different bolt-on points for the bottles and stuff. So I'm going to do that as well. i probably going to have to get new mounts for the front. I don't know. I might just reuse those. I, looking at all this rust, my budget just completely blown out of the water. So I got to save money where I can. And yes, fortunately this in here, the cowl is not rusty. There's a little bit here. Uh around the fan box there and around that seam but that's fine it's nothing i can't patch in pr 15 and this down here by the door hinges and stuff is fine it just needs a little wire brushing and some more seam sealer in there to replace that so next step is to take off the core support yeah very very rusty i mean the battery just yep
All right, that's the front end, except for the bumper, which I don't know if you can use a 70s bumper on a 80s front end. I don't know, I'd like to, because this one's in better condition overall, less dense, uh, I don't know. <sighs> Doesn't really matter to me. The height might be different. Uh, I guess we're gonna find out when we start taking that apart. I'm not sure I could just do my research. Really need to get the pressure washer over here and kind of spray this down. Get all this crusty stuff off the. Oh, that's undercoating. All this crusty stuff off the suspension and whatnot. And I probably will do that. Clear all the years of grease and everything off. And then I can weld in plates here. The surrounding metal, it actually thickens up pretty good. So this is still thick. Even here, it's still thick. So I can clean that up and weld to it. It'll be good enough for my purposes is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. firewall I don't like the firewall condition but the the upper piece the upper cowl piece is fine it's this lower piece that appears to have developed some issues and around the heater box as well I may end up pulling the heater box just because I need to patch around it I don't know I was not going to pull the heater, but this metal around it is not so good. Up here, it's a little crumbly. I don't know. And I can patch that. This isn't structural at this point. It's an overlapped seam that got rusty. Down there around the heater box, those are some pretty big holes. I'd like to maybe patch them with metal. And this here, where the speedometer cable goes through, that's that's a mess. Uh, but the wiper motor is coming off in the wiper assembly, so that won't be in the way. blew off the front about as much as I wanted to. I didn't go into too much because at the end of the day this is a work truck and it's just going to be getting dirty again. This is never going to be a show vehicle so mostly I was concentrating on blowing off the Zerk fittings and the brake bleeder valves and things that I need to get to and any bolts that I might need to loosen. Uh, that was the priority there. I'm going to have to take the windshield wipers off not just so that we can maybe patch this a little bit better but uh also because i want to clean down in there in the cowl and also because we need to swap the wiper system i believe these need to be the longer studs because they need to come through this cowl piece here so before we can reinstall the front clip off of this truck uh, one of the big things we have to do is fix the fender bolt points here and here that's missing. <clears throat> uh, when I took them off, they ripped out, and we have to get that screw out, and we'll maybe reuse that threaded insert. And down there, the uh, bolt ripped out. That's fine. We can rebuild that. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this one. This is easy enough because I can trace it. Up here is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's angled in. You can see how there's kind of a compound angle thing going on there. So we're going to try to reproduce that as best we can. <clears throat> uh, the angle of the bolt does matter somewhat. We do have 
we do have some of the angle preserved here, so hopefully that shouldn't be too difficult. The main thing is going to be getting that hole and welded nut in the right location. Uh, and we're going to work on that. So we're going to replace this metal. Ideally, at this point, I would take the door off. But I don't think I'm going to do that in this case. Because I don't want to have to reposition it and I'm lazy. And this isn't going to be a perfect job. The main thing is I can get to both sides of the panel to clean, prep, and then weld it in. I'm not going to worry so much about cutting out the old rust. Um, I mean, I'm going to remove as much crumbly stuff as I can, but then I'm going to rust convert the remaining and I'm going to try to weld to the good metal underneath or take it down to good metal that I can weld to. Because you're not going to be able to see it. The main thing is that we don't want to get this out that way too far. These fenders are shimmed a little bit. So we do have a little bit of space to work with possibly. Um, you know, there's always there's always some things in there you can you can tweak and, and bend a little bit, but they are shimmed on both sides, so we possibly have a little bit of extra space to work with. So I'm not going to worry too much about getting that exactly factory flush. You know, reproducing the exact metal here. That's why I can get away with welding over top of this. I think. I hope. But I am going to try to prep this as much as I can back in there before I go hog wild on it. Down here is going to be a lot easier. It's pretty much just cut the piece, prep this, cut out whatever rust remains, and then start welding. So let's do that. I won't bore you with the details, but let's get cracking. So I've got my template here for the lower portion. And I got this piece of metal that... Actually, I cut off the old bed plate and it happens to have a hole drilled to hold it down and, well, you know, that was just meant to be. So <laughs> we're going to reuse that hole. We're going to cut that out and basically reuse some of the material here without actually spending any money, hopefully. So this is really nice thick steel, actually thicker than what it is on the other side. So. I think not only will it weld real nice, but once I get everything cleaned up, it'll be really strong. So let's cut that out and clean that up and then get everything fitted together. All right, I welded in the bottom plate and the upper plate. The upper plate, if you can tell, I'm not going to zoom in on it because it looks absolutely horrible. Uh, the welds look horrible, but they will hold. Uh, I did not, I did not worry about finishing that part there because well, this this whole pillar here under the windshield there is a mess. I mean, all, all that metal needs replaced to make it, I mean, if it would make it look nice. I mean, it, it's structurally sound for the moment. It's just, you know, it's got some holes in it. The metal that's there that I left is actually fairly thick. It's, it, it's a mess. This, this truck has a lot of Bondo in it. I mean, it, it just, like down here, they just bondoed completely around the, you know, just bondo everywhere there around the door switch. And this joint on the rockers up here, I don't know what's going on, but they just bondoed over it. I'm going to have to really clean that up and probably weld some new metal in there. And then reapply the bondo to make it look good because whatever patch I put in there is not going to look good and be proper. But I'm beginning to think like, I mean, there's there's like an eighth inch of Bondo like all around the door sills and all around the door frames. And I mean, my goodness, this, this cab needs all new sheet metal. Anyway, it's a good thing that I am just going to be using it as a work truck. Not quite a beater, but you know, at this point, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not gonna be treated fantastic while I use it, but it's going to work. So the goal has changed a little bit at this point. I was going to be replacing a lot of metal, 
But as I encounter things like that rivet right there, which that can't be a good sign, and that rivet right there, again, can't be a good sign. I'm just, I am doing a lot of temporary patching. There's the floor, which I'm probably gonna put some reinforcement metal in there. I mean, it needs a lot of new metal. At this point, my goal is to get this truck to last about 10 or 15 years, this cab. And at that point, then we'll have to figure out something else to do with it. Clearly, someone before me was very, very active with the Bondo. And I have to be active again just to cover it up, so. Oopsie. It's not going to be pretty. Anywho, moving on, we need to take the wiper system off because we're going to be replacing that. So all this is going to come off. I'm going to clean the cowl up and I'm going to make sure there's no leaks in there down into the cab area. And I'm going to take off the wiper motor and that'll allow me to get back here more to the uh, speedometer cable where I can maybe weld a reinforcement plate around there. Again, this lower plate on the firewall is a mess. And, like, there's a hole drilled down there. I don't know if you can see it. It's, yeah. It's not going to be pretty. I'm just going to, I'm going to make it functional. So, let's get these wipers off. Wiper motor and get the wiper assembly out. Well, I pulled the wipers. And I cleaned the cowl. And I'm afraid that we... I've discovered more issues. This is what happens when you never clean your cowl. You just let junk sit in there. You can see all the way over. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, basically that whole sheet of metal needs replaced. Which isn't going to happen, obviously, because, I mean, the whole cab... At this point, the whole cab needs to be stripped down. To pull that metal out, you got to strip the dash and everything out so you can get to it. The only way that's going to happen is in like, you know, 10, 15 years, if I ever get an enclosed shop and can actually do some of these things indoors. This isn't really the kind of thing that's great to do outdoors, metal work. I don't like to do metal work outdoors because everything rusts so fast. When you're working on it and you get caught in the rain and... Anyway, yeah, so I have little choice but to patch that. Like I said with, you know, this horrible looking stuff here, this truck probably only has about 10, 15 years tops left in it before somebody's going to have to completely rebuild this cab or replace the cab. I mean, it's, there's too many pieces of sheet metal that are just blown away. I mean, it needs lifted off of here, needs completely stripped, sandblasted, and rebuilt. Which, at this point in the truck's life, isn't worth it. Maybe in 10, 15 years, it'll be worth enough money that someone would be willing to put that kind of money and time into it. But for right now, like I said before, it's going to be a work truck. So, I am going to basically PR-15 that whole cowl. Uh... You know, I'm going to brush it, I'm going to POR-15 it, and then I'm going to patch the holes with Bondo. I hate to say it, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to do it because, I mean, the metal's shot. If someone really wanted to, they could go in there and they could, you know, weld in individual pieces of metal, either from the top or the bottom. The problem with welding individual pieces of metal in there right now is it just ends up being junk catchers, and then it'll rust that much faster. So I'm just going to try to preserve what's there with POR-15 and Bondo. And I may try to do the same thing here. Because the seam, you know, is clearly blown out there. The seam sealer is gone. And water came down here, was running down here and rusting out this top piece of metal. And, you know, it's held in place still whatever spot welds or whatever they put in there are, in, are still there. It's just it's got holes in it. And at this point, 
I really just need to waterproof it and make it last those 10 or 15 years I want to get out of it. So, sad to say, but we're going to put more Bondo on this truck. So let's get moving with more of this metal work here in the cowl. By metal work, I mean crappy Bondo work. Well, I've repaired the cowl as much as I'm going to do, which was basically, you know, Bondo. And I think we're ready now to test fit the newer style wipers that truck so I got to pull them off and then we'll see how everything fits in here with the bolts I don't know if we can just drill another hole or what the deal is I don't know we're gonna find out all right problem one obviously there's a lot of holes in this cowl that aren't in that one like the points for the, the metal piece that goes here that's fine that's just a drill it's drilling some cutting whatever but the wiper holes are different. Where there's just a circle in the other one, this one actually has uh, an oval and an indent. And that's because to get the longer wiper shafts through, you have to kind of worm them up that way more. You can't just put them behind and pull them forward. So I think I'm gonna have to modify that for starters. And then, I don't know about the, <clears throat> Drilling the third hole, we will see. So basically, I made a transfer template. I'm gonna center punch these and then drill them. Even though some are nearby the old holes, a, I still want them to be right. It, it'll be fine. If need be, I can weld up the old holes. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, I got the wipers and the squirters, wiper squirters, windshield squirters, I don't know, bolted in. I also cut the holes for the cowl. Uh, I got them as close as I could. I don't know if I got them good, but they're a little big anyway, because if you've ever put any, one of these on, they've got these rubber bumpers here, and that's basically all that goes in there just to kind of hold it in position to keep it from flying around. So that's all I did. Um, we are going to have to move the rear hinge pieces here and I haven't looked into that yet. I'm thinking it's just drill and bolt and cut the slots for the hinges down there but they also have the brackets for the end cowl piece there. The middle brackets screw onto here, which I'm going to put them on after I have everything else located. And I'm going to put the wiper motor on. And then we'll, I guess, maybe hook up the battery and see if it works. I don't know. We're going to find out. But for right now, the wipers are in position and actually working. Um, I did drill all the extra holes, obviously, and actually the... Uh, the offsets cover up pretty good on the existing holes because they're so close. And I did have to modify a little bit here for the rib on the wiper. But the next step is going to be putting on the motor and seeing how that aligns, I think. Um, well, I mean, I know the motor is going to align. Maybe the next step will be these hinges. I'm not sure. These stops have to come off. 
All right, so the new style has two sets of hinges. If you don't know, it has the rear hinge here to guide it down. And it has the main spring hinge in the front on the fender. So this requires a slightly different cowl because this hinge part has to swing down into the cowl. So that's why it's slit there. And that piece is bolted on. So we're going to have to modify this cowl so that it has the slit and so that we can bolt it on. Now this isn't so much, this isn't part of the, the spring part of the hinge or anything. This is just a guide for the rear of the hood to keep everything kind of straight. So we got to get this in, but it doesn't have to be, you know, solid, but it does have to be aligned properly. Uh, now, fortunately, they made it a little bit easy for us and, you know, we can measure, you know, back and find the location of those holes and then we can drill them and then we can bolt those on the position and then i believe we can start rebuilding the cowl and then we can start transferring all this over the only piece i'm going to paint before i put it on is this piece so i don't have to tape around the windshield and stuff and make it easier i'll tape underneath it so i'm going to strip and paint that before i put it on and mount those hinges and there's a few more holes and things we have to put on most of the holes for this that sits up there are in place but there's one or two that aren't so we'll just have to drill those for the clips and then we're good so that's pretty much just boring drilling and bolting so let's do that Okay, we got this side cut out. <clears throat> now, in reality, GM welded nuts on the underside of these so that you could remove the hinge without removing the fender. But, you know, if you need to, you can snake something in here between the fender and whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to put her right on and we'll worry about all that later. Mm -hmm. Yep, sounds perfectly reasonable. So the driver's side rear hinge is installed. Also put on the wiper motor. And this, well hopefully I got it right, this should be for the washer pump, which is going to be up here on the fender instead of mounted on the wiper motor like the older ones. I haven't tested it yet, but we'll get to that. Move to the other side and put that hinge on. Alright, have the passenger side rear hinge on. I also have the brush guard, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, on. And I put on the hoses for the windshield washer. So the next step is to prep this cowl and paint it. So we'll do that and then we'll pop that on. So we have the cowl on. I uh, know it is not a great paint job. That is rattle can paint, and that is all this truck is getting. So, now we're ready to move on to the rest of the front clip. And for that, we need to start tearing this thing apart.
All right, well, these holes, I didn't remember they were so big, but they are. So I thought those were more rusted out than they are, but they're not. So I'm not gonna worry about that. These mounts are in much better condition than the other ones. So, you know, I'll probably try to make them work. Okay, I am going to put the fender liners on, get everything lined up. Put the fenders on. <clears throat> I'm not going to tighten any bolts until I get kind of everything where I want it and roughly shimmed. And now you, when you put one of these front clips on, all the adjustment takes place back here. Uh, there's you, you put the you put the shims in all of these bolts to get height out the bottom and out of the top. In here, it just bolts to the core support, you know, and everything gets locked down that way. Uh, that's why sometimes you'll see some of these get pulled kind of as one piece. Sometimes people will do that if they're brave. I'm not going to do that because I'm not that strong. Um, I'm not putting a lot of time and effort or anything into cleaning this just yet because, well, as you can see, it's a rusty hunk of junk. But it's still better than the one that was in here. So with that in mind... Um, also, I'm taking into account that I'm probably going to be tearing this apart again um, down the road because eventually my goal is to put a specific kind of diesel engine in this truck. And that will probably require, you know, taking a lot of this stuff out for access and possibly to make things fit. So uh, I'm not going to worry just too much about, you know, how this looks and uh you know how rusty it is because well it's there and it'll work for the time being Fenders and core support are on. And the next step is to get the hood on and see if it fits. That's why I removed the latch because I don't have the release in yet. I'm going to have to drill a hole in the firewall for that, the appropriate place, wherever that one has it. Pull it out of there, move it over here. Anyway, that's going to be part of putting all the little things back together. So next step is to fit the hood on here. So I have the hood on. I did not film that because there were lots of R-rated words going on there. Uh, I got it aligned as best I can. I am not a body man. So my body gaps and my alignments are not gonna be factory perfect or even great or very good, but I had a lot of trouble getting these fenders pulled in properly. They're in as far as I can get them, and the, the gaps are still too wide. I don't even have any shims up here at the moment, I don't think. I, I can't go in anymore, and the same over on that side. So I don't know how you're supposed to do it. And of course, you can't go in up here at the cowl because, you know, they're bolted tight. I think I do have the, got all the bolts there, yep. And anyway. It's on and it works. I just have to run the cable for the hood latch and then reinstall the hood latch. And I don't know where I put the hood latch, so I hope I'll find that again. Anywho, I'm gonna get the wiring, try to get the wiring sorted, some of the wiring. And I can't really reuse this harness too easy without cutting up these plugs, which I don't really wanna do. I'm just gonna move the light harness over here because I already have it modified with the LMC truck kit to, uh, run the voltage right from the battery through a relay rather than up through the switch and then back through the lights the main voltage so the switch is just a relay control with that kit so uh, that's what some of these relays and things are it's uh, much safer than running all that high voltage through the switch and it's better on the switch so anyway I'd like to bring that over too so I'm just gonna bring that over I'm gonna splice it 
uh, somewhere up here. And anyway, I was untaping things and I found what I believe to be a spare ignition key. And this is a, an original GM key by the looks of it. I wonder if it works. No reason I got the camera out. Just gonna show you when the wiring was done, but well, let's see here. <laughs> it works. Well, I got a spare ignition key. <clears throat> Needs cleaned up a little bit, but there she is. <laughs> uh, I guess we know where that guy kept a spare ignition key now. I wonder if there's a spare door key around here somewhere. Uh, I mean, he locked himself out. Probably never locked the doors. Anyway, I'll make sure to put that right there so I lose it right away. And so basically what I'm going to do, what was I saying? I'm going to unwrap this. I'm not sure. Oh, there's your there's your spare door key, I think. Is there two of them? Three of them? I don't know. I'm going to unwrap that and uh, let's find out. Yeah, so here's all the keys that were wrapped around that wire harness. I thought at first this was going to be a gas tank key, but I don't think that's what this is. It doesn't match the gas tank key that's on the ignition ring currently. These keys appear to be the same, for so for some reason he had two door keys and an ignition key taped on there, so that's great because we got a complete set. I did not test these. Uh, Doug, the gentleman I bought this from, said don't lock the doors. So that's what we're going to do because, you know, I'm stupid that way. Does it work? I guess, uh, I don't know. Try to unlock it. It unlocks. Oh, there we go. See if it works on the other side. I guess that means these are probably factory locks as long as they've been on there. Open the door first so we don't lock ourselves out. Huh. All right. We got spare keys. This is kind of like turning into archaeology at this point. So that's pretty cool. These appear to be original GM keys maybe. I don't know. I have to clean them up a little bit. They're a little, a little sticky. The old electrical tape. Okay, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> that explains. Wait, no, there's one more key. Hold on, one more. This appears to be. I don't know what is this. A house, a shop key, some kind of lock. Obviously, it's a lock. I mean, like a padlock. Tumblers are so small. Looks like a padlock key. Oh, there. I must have had all his padlock keys and stuff for his farm, gates, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there we are. Uh, did, did I get them all? I think I got all the keys now. now. That's all the electrical tape. Yep, okay, that's all the keys. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, won't do us any good to have them under the hood once we get our new hood latch installed in the cab. So, good we found them now. I use magnetic boxes, so yeah. Uh, I'm sure anybody who finds my vehicles over the years probably find these magnetic boxes with keys in them. Back to the wiring. Okay, what was I saying for wiring? Uh, I'm gonna splice it somewhere in here and sp just splice it into the new harness. It should have the same amount of wires and probably even the same color, but of course I'm gonna double check. Try to splice them at the same point so everything is the same length. And then we should be good to go. They also have the, the horns, or it's the headlight and horn harness. Have to untangle some of this stuff. This stuff has the air conditioning lines and some of those things added on, but what is that? Oh, that's the old plug. This is the plug you use for the for the kit. So okay, let's do that and then we'll uh, kind of put this one there and that one here since we're going to be putting this truck back together again. I've started swapping the front uh, stuff off the engine 
while I had them apart there, swap the pulleys over, and that way we'll have the newer style multi-groove alternator belt, which is much preferred for traction. And we'll also have the pulleys that will allow us to use the air conditioning. Uh, I gotta move the air conditioning compressor over, but I gotta disconnect that last line, so... Uh, other than that, that's all I'm moving over from this engine, I believe. So just the air conditioner compressor and the wiring harness. I'm going to do that and... Oh, and the heater lines with the valve in it. i got to move that over too so that I can shut that off when we're running the AC. And then I can put the bottles, the, uh, the washer bottle, and wire that up. I think I showed that before. This should be the washer wiring. I don't know what this stuff is here. We got extra wires we're going to have to sort out at some point. I don't know. So I have the washer fluid tank in. I spliced it into the wires that I'm thinking are the washer fluid wires. Let's find out. Get the pump running. Oh, it's squirting. So it's working. <clears throat> so I will let these connections and tape them. And that should be good. And then I can I should get this harness up away from you know, the exhaust and run the lines properly. And I don't know. Maybe sort these wires out. Is this the same wire or is this a oh that's the same wire all right oh don't need that these wires here uh i'm just gonna tie them up for now they may go to the back trailer hitch or something and i want to keep track of them if they do so i i'm just gonna keep them up out of the way in case I need them. All right, that's our quick rattle can job. We got runs, we're gonna have probably orange peel, and I don't care. The main thing is, it's kind of bluish. As far as paint prep goes, I did not do as good a job, even near as good a job as a normal person would have. And that is because I don't care, it's a work truck. This is an old front clip, and it's got dents and dings. 
frankly i don't even know if i'm going to try to take the dents or dings out i'll probably just leave them there you know maybe if we get lucky some of the uh rust that i missed will come back through the paint and then we'll have patina but in blue to match the rest of the blue truck instead of like this weird multicolored patina which just looks weird on a truck like this so yeah i think uh that'll cover it and now we can uh get to putting the front back together the grill In case you were wondering if this was one of those fake internet shows where where the people on camera don't do any work yeah it's funny I had to find something to wipe my camera lens off and the only thing that wasn't sweaty was the cuff of my pants so there you go <laughs> Whew, it's hot out here I'm I'm not lying it's hot well the front clip is on front end is done and we are going to move on to the bodywork next time so next time you see this truck I don't know what is that part three I think it's part three of the rebuild here part three of the rebuild next time we are going to do the bodywork and kind of address some of the rust and the holes and the you know the whole Swiss cheesiness of it so if you want to see that if you can subscribe hit that notification bell and that'll tell you when that video is out we always appreciate likes, subscribes. I appreciate anybody who takes the time to watch. And as always, thanks for watching.